So we've distinguished sympathetic and parasympathetic. Talked about how we have dual innervation to all of our organs except the adrenal gland. Let's start uh, focusing in on the differences between them. So the sympathetic division, also known as thoracolumbar, because the cell bodies of the preganglionic neurons are in the lateral gray horn of the 12, 12 thoracic segments and first few lumbar segments. So remember in the somatic nervous system, the cell bodies were in the ventral gray horn. Now they're in the lateral gray horn. And they emerge from, look at on the illustration, T1 through L3. So they are emerging from the spinal cord in the thoracic and lumbar divisions. And therefore, the sympathetic division has another name. It's also called the thoracolumbar division. So easy, thorax and lumbar. Most sympathetic, ganglion, gangli, most sympathetic preganglionic neurons are relatively short since the ganglia lie near the spinal cord. So look in the illustration again. You've got these fibers, these sympathetic fibers leaving the spinal cord and then they synapse. See how there's a big giant chain of ganglia there? Those are the sympathetic trunk ganglia, sometimes called the sympathetic chain ganglia. I let my students say the chain gang. So notice you got superior cervical, middle cervical, inferior cervical, and then all of the chain gang. There are a few other ones that we're going to talk about in a moment. You can see they're celiac, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. So, but in every case, the ganglia, remember a ganglion is a collection of cell bodies that's out in the PNS. The ganglia are relatively close to the spinal cord. That's why the preganglionic neuron is relatively short. The postganglionic neuron is relatively long. The first neuron only travels a short distance from the, sympathetic, from the spinal cord to a sympathetic ganglion. And then the second, the postganglionic, travels a long way comparatively out to the organ. So let's look at some of these sympathetic ganglia and plexuses. Remember, plexus means a braid um, in Greek, like a tangle. So in some cases, we've just got a whole bunch of nerve fibers all bunching together. It's maybe not technically a ganglia, it's a plexus, but we kind of all consider them to be the same sort of thing. They're achieving the same purpose. So the paravertebral, paravertebral, pronounce it the way you want, um, sympathetic trunk ganglia, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. Um, these are that you can see in the illustration there. You've got a big chain, all right, the sympathetic trunk. These are running all along the spinal cord there, all right. Then the prevertebral, prevertebral, or collateral ganglia. So these include the cardiac plexus at the heart, the celiac ganglion and plexus. Celiac root word has to do with stomach. This is going to stomach and what we call the accessory digestive organs, liver and pancreas. Liver produces bile for digestion. Pancreas produces most of your digestive enzymes. So all of this has to do really with digestion. Um, then there's also the superior mesenteric. So celiac root word means stomach. Enteric root word means intestines. Just get that into your head now. It'll make your life easier. So superior mesenteric mostly is uh, dealing with digestion itself. Inferior mesenteric deals with urination and defecation. It's going down to the lower part of the abdomen. So there you go, these are sympathetic ganglia, and I want you to know which ones they are, okay? If I were to ask you, maybe a multiple choice question, you know, pick out which is not a sympathetic ganglion. Now I want you to know which are the sympathetic ganglia. Now looking at the sympathetic trunk, um, these are mostly for organs above the diaphragm, all right? So in other words, lungs and heart, and organs then up into the neck and head as well. Some sympathetic preganglionic fibers synapse in the trunk ganglia. So that's what we're seeing at number one. So again, let's just pin this down. We have the preganglionic fiber, um, the axon, which is emerging. Remember the cell body is in the lateral gray horn of the spinal cord. So the preganglionic axon comes out, goes to a sympathetic trunk ganglion, synapses there, and then the postganglionic fiber goes out to an organ itself. In this case, um, goes through the celiac ganglion and then going out to the intestine. So others simply pass through. They don't actually synapse in the trunk. They simply pass through, and we'll see more of that coming up. Let's talk about um, the Ramey communicantes. So remember when we looked at um, the spinal cord, the spinal nerves, remember shortly after the dorsal and ventral roots came together, 
Um, they formed the spinal nerve. And then we had the two rami. We had the dorsal and ventral ramus. Um, so dorsal, again, going around to mostly the muscles on your back, and the ventral going out to basically all the rest of your body, all right, which is in front of your spinal cord. So in this case, we also have rami communicantes. So what we're doing now is we're looking at the axon, the fiber that leaves the um, spinal cord, leaves the lateral gray horn. Remember, it's myelinated, and it comes out here. Um, uh, it comes off of the anterior ramus and goes out to the sympathetic trunk ganglion. Um, it is the white ramus communicans, singular ramus communicans, plural rami communicantes. So this is the myelinated axon that comes out to the sympathetic trunk, all right? Then the unmyelinated gray rami communicantes, individual ones, gray ramus communicans, are the sympathetic postganglionic fibers. These are the ones that are now past the synapse at the ganglion. They're going on to the target or the effective organ. So um, they are allowing why rami communicantes well, as we're about to see here, they're going to allow communication between different levels of the spinal cord. So some sympathetic preganglionic fibers synapse at the same level of the spinal cord. That's what we're seeing in the top illustration. They synapse at the same level. So the white ramus comes out, synapses at the same level in the trunk ganglion, and then goes out to an effector organ. Postganglionic runs from the ganglion to the target organ. Some, on the other hand, synapse at different levels. So now look in illustration number two. We see in the lower half, there's the um, cell body and the lateral gray horn coming out. It goes to the trunk ganglion, but simply passes through. It synapses at a trunk ganglion at a higher level of the spinal cord. That's why we refer to these as the Ramey communicantes. We're communicating between different levels of the spinal cord. All right. So after it synapses, then the postganglionic runs to a ganglion, uh, runs from the ganglion to a target organ. But see the difference between one and two, they either synapse at the same level or at different, different levels. That's why Ramey communicantes, communication between different levels of the spinal cord. And in some cases, they pass through the sympathetic trunk entirely without even synapsing anywhere in the sympathetic trunk ganglia. They go to one of those collateral ganglia, like the celiac ganglion, like the superior mesenteric, like the inferior mesenteric. Okay, so that's why those are still all sympathetic ganglia. Um, the, we call it a splanchnic nerve. Look, the CH is pronounced like a K, so even though it looks like splanchnic, it's normally pronounced splanchnic. So the splanchnic nerves then are basically the preganglionic fibers that are coming out, passing through the sympathetic trunk, and going out to one of these collateral ganglia, which is what. All right, so let's switch over and look at the parasympathetic division. Parasympathetic, also known as craniosacral, because here the cell bodies are either in the nuclei of the cranial nerves, three, seven, nine, and 10, or in the sacral region of the spinal cord. So cranial sacral. Remember sympathetic was thoracolumbar because all those nerve fibers emerge from the thoracic and lumbar segments. Now they're either coming from cranial nerves, in particular three, seven, nine, and 10, or they're coming out from the sacral region of the spinal cord. So notice in this case then that these uh, preganglionic fibers are going almost all the way out to the target or effector organ. So look carefully there in the lower half of the illustration. See there are synapses right out near the liver, near the stomach, um, near the pancreas, and so on. So those preganglionic fibers are traveling almost all the way to the organ, and then they're synapsing with short postganglionic fibers that go to the organ itself. All right. So contrast then between sympathetic and parasympathetic. Par uh, sympathetic, short preganglionic, long postganglionic. Parasympathetic, long preganglionic, short postganglionic. Let's zero in and look in particular at some of the ganglia. So we looked at sympathetic ganglia, like cardiac and celiac and superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. Let's look now at some of the parasympathetic ganglia. So the otic. 
The root word otic has to do with ear. So this is a ganglion that's up by your ear. It's from cranial nerve number nine. It goes to salivary glands. In particular, you have a big salivary gland right next to your ear called the parotid gland. And so this is a ganglion that's going to the parotid gland. Um, or ganglion near the parotid gland. Th these are parasympathetic neurons that are going to stimulate salivation. Remember, parasympathetic, rest and digest. Salivation is, is a parasympathetic response. Submandibular, where are you going to find this? Yeah, under the mandible. And you've got a couple more um, salivary glands down there. You've got the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands. So they're also being activated by the parasympathetic nervous system, but in this case they're using cranial nerve number seven. And then um, cranial nerve number seven also goes to pterygopalatine or sphenopalatine ganglion. So connected here with sphenoid bone. Remember the pterygoid processes of the sphenoid bone. These are going to the nasal mucosa, um, the pharynx, and the lacrimal glands. So here, these uh, nerve fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system, the ganglia, then the postganglionic, are going out to produce mucus, which you use for swallowing. Um, and then also lacrimal glands um, producing tears. Tears are important because they clean your eye. So that's why I remember uh, cranial nerve number seven, uh, Bell's palsy, you get the weird thing with uh, tearing, either uncontrolled tearing or inability to do tearing. So, and then ciliary, the muscles in, you, you have muscles in your eye called ciliary muscles. So cranial nerve three, Remember, that's the oculomotor nerve, so not surprising, it's going to a ganglion that's going to be dealing with muscles in your eye. So the smooth muscles of the eyeball, including the lens and the pupil. So parasympathetic is going to be causing constriction of the pupil, and then it also causes, uh, or controls, accommodation of the lens. So um, when you look at something far away, your cornea will do enough refraction, bending of the light to focus. But as things get closer, you need extra help from the lens. And that's under the control of these uh, parasympathetic fibers that are passing through or synapsing in the ciliary ganglion, cranial nerve number three, oculomotor. Then finally, the pelvic splanchnic nerves, just as we saw sympathetic splanchnic nerves. Here we have pelvic splanchnic nerves coming out S2 to S4. These are going to your intestines, your urinary bladder, and your genitals. So these are controlling urination and defecation. Um, also at the genitals, um, remember parasympathetic had to do with sexual arousal. So notice these fibers are emerging from S2 to S4. So we sometimes say to remember that S2 to S4 keeps your pecker off the floor. See if that helps.